Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be going over the AMD 2022 settings that I'm using after we've seen uh, several updates since the last video. Plus, you guys wanted me to make this. That's the top comment I get on that video is make another AMD settings video. Not a lot has changed. So if you've uh, watched that last one, there's a few things in here that have changed. But for the most part, it remains the same from the 2021 version of this. But let's waste no time and let's get right into it. So the first thing I want you guys to do is go on to amd drivers and support i'll try to remember to link this down below but if not just literally type this into google and you'll get exactly what i'm looking at right here and you're going to want to do this auto detect and install updates for radeon graphics and ryzen chipset drivers for windows so just hit download now and get the right software that is first and foremost what you're going to want to do another alternative is to come down here find your product so if you have for example 5700 and click all the way through you hit submit and then you'll get exactly what you need just you have to pick and you have to know what you're using using for this to, to for this to work so if you're on windows 11 windows 10 click on whatever one that is and go ahead and hit download i prefer the other one because it knows everything and it downloads all of the different softwares that you might need. So to check this, right click on your browser and you should see AMD Radeon software. If this is not here, then you did not do the last step and you need to go back and do that. But once you have that, we're almost ready to go in. I wanna go over some Windows settings here to optimize the software. Through the new Windows updates, we've noticed one thing. I want you guys to go down here, hit game mode. This is something I suggest on every FPS video I've ever made, I think. Turn on game mode. Sometimes AMD used to not work, but the, with the software at its current state, I have this on putting these both on with the settings I'm going to show you is how you're going to maximize more so smoothness than FPS. Your in-game settings is going to be the main thing for FPS. AMD Radeon settings. It's a lot about smoothness of the game in general, not so much about FPS. You're not going to get 20, 30% increases. You might look at like a five to 10% marginal increase in FPS. This is more about latency, smoothness. And those are the two main things I would say that you're gaining from doing these settings. So we'll keep this simple and not do do anything that could potentially harm your PC. That's the last thing I want for you or your PC. And we'll just do one more thing and type in power plan. So hit that, hit edit power plan. And then we're going to see a bunch of options here. And you're going to want to hit change advanced power settings. And right here, you should see what performance mode you're on. I want you guys to be on high performance mode. So click on that if you're not on that. And then go down here and make sure that your power savings mode is off. Okay, so we don't need power savings. This is for FPS smoothness, not for energy bill efficiency. And realistically, this is marginal. It's not going to affect much. Now, if you're really pushing your power supply, this might be an issue, but you shouldn't be pushing your power supply even close. And if you are pushing your power supply close, then you you might have random shutdowns on your computer and you need to upgrade that ASAP. So those are the only two things I want to go over in this. Now, right click, hit Radeon software. This is where the money is. So I'm going to go full screen. You will see all your games right here. This is, uh, for the most part, going to be games. I obviously have like editing this and my games aren't really on here that much. That's because I spend a lot of time in Photoshop and in the editing software, not so much in these games. And for whatever reason, Rainbow Six Siege isn't on here, which I have like 2000 hours on. You'll see all that right here. But the thing you're want to focus your eyes toward is this right area you want to hit check for updates make sure that there are no updates so just let this fall through find 17 seconds and it's going to tell you if you have any new versions i should be up to date because this one that i have released on 2 3 2022 and it right now as i'm recording this that has only been a week so we are pretty good there. I think this should be um, good or else you will have issues. Now hit the gaming tab because this is where um, this is where you should be. And we could go per uh, per game here, but we don't want to do that. We want to go global graphics. So right now we're at custom. We have everything off. That's just how I have it preset for the beginning of this. And we're going to go through this one by one. So Radeon anti-lag. This one is always going to be on for me. Now I don't actually see much of a difference like playing the game, but I do know that there is a difference but i do keep it on just for that it's not going to hinder your performance if anything it's going to help your performance so you might as well have this on for any computer type regardless of how high end or low end it is ready on chill i want this disabled this is going to reduce your frame rate to save power when it's possible we don't want to limit our fps in any way except if you're playing some like role play game and you don't need anything more than 60 fps and you're getting like 200 then maybe you should do this but then again you could just put an fps cap so i would just i would just never touch this ready on boost 
this is similar to the NVIDIA one that they have. This is going to lower your resolution to maximize FPS. Problem with this one is it is not as good as NVIDIA's because it does not make the game look as good. So NVIDIA has this thing where they will downscale your game, but somehow tweak with the sharpening and all that stuff to make it still look like it's a 1080p game while it's actually playing in like 1600 by 900. So that's how you get your FPS up a lot. In game, some games have an AMD setting that you could turn on that does that but this setting right here doesn't do that. So don't touch that one. Image sharpening, I like this on. I've had this uh, anywhere between 30 and 90. I keep it somewhere between that. A lot of people will have this on like 70 to 90. I think that's just too sharp. So I put it down here in this range, but it really depends on the game for me. In Warzone, a lot of people put it up here. You'll see that in streams when they're really chiseled edges and stuff. That's exactly what this is. The higher you have this on though, the more performance loss you're gonna get. This is going to hurt your performance, but the clarity is definitely worth it. In games that you don't have clarity turn this on in games that you have great clarity might as well just keep it off enhanced sync this is something that is similar to v-sync so if you know what v-sync is it's going to slow down your frames to match your monitor refresh rate so if you have a fixed refresh rate you might as well turn this on because it will do anti-tearing but for maximum esports gaming try hard valorant siege warzone whatever i'd keep it off if you have a free sync monitor keep it off some computers, this actually does hinder the performance, unstable performance, crashes, things of that nature. You could look at this as the culprit. It's not 100% sure, but um, it. I would try this before you try anything else. Make sure that this is not it. I keep this off for sure, and that's my recommendation to everyone watching this. Frame rate control, I have it off. If you're playing something else and you want it on, if you want your capped FPS, all right, go ahead and turn it on. But I'm usually playing esports games, so I'm canning that at disabled anti-aliasing i would have this on use application settings because you're going to want this different per game is my assumption anti-aliasing is just blending textures to not make jaggy lines blending the pixels together you'll know if you turn your pixel or if you turn anti-aliasing off you'll see exactly what i'm talking about but you're just going to have it uh, per application you're probably not going to have something for every single game you're not going to want the same thing it's going to create really weird textures if you have both of these being opposite. So I just do use application settings. Anti-aliasing method. I have it at multi-sampling. That's just the lowest quality one. This is the best performing one and the lowest graphics quality as expected. And it goes up from there. Super sampling looks good, but realistically, the difference is minimal and the FPS difference is kind of high. So I keep that at the lowest. So morphographical anti-aliasing. This is something that could be used with other anti-aliasing. I have this off, but this is a alternative to SSAA. If you know what SSAA is, then maybe turn this on because it's similar to SSAA, but it has better performance than SSAA. If you don't know what I'm saying, keep it off. If you do know what I'm saying, give it a, give it a test. Try it on versus off. Test your performance hit. But for the average user, this is just, is just something that is never going to be needed. So next setting, you're going to want this disabled if you're trying to maximize fps you know if you're not really caring too much about your your highest fps you can turn this on enabled and i would even turn this up to like 16 to 8x and that's for the best clarity now this only works on dx9 games and even at that it doesn't work very well so even if you're not looking for fps i would keep it off texture filtering quality put this on performance mode surface format optimization have this on enabled what this is going to do is sometimes override the application settings to give you better performance the cl the clarity um i've never seen it be to the point where i'm like wow i could actually tell uh, that this is worse but so it should be very very minimal so i keep this on if, if for whatever reason you think that this thing just looks terrible on your computer have it off every computer is a little bit different your tessellation amd optimize is a option i've since changed from that I like use application settings. This is the most balanced between FPS, performance, and quality. If you do, uh, the, the overall highest FPS you could do is go here, hit override, and then hit off. So if you're absolutely pushing FPS, do that. If not, use application settings. Those are the only two choices I would do at this point. Open GL triple buffering disabled 10 bit pixel format disabled. So the last thing I would even touch is your shader cache. And I would reset this right now. If you have not in the past, since you watched the last video a year ago, or even six months, if you haven't done this every six months, I would reset this. This is just storing crap in your computer. So store less crap and reset this while you can would be my, my suggestion to you, especially if you've never done this at all, that is a good idea. So let's go into display. So this is where you're able to adjust how much saturation, all that stuff that you have. That's actually the only one I would touch. I would touch saturation if you want it, the your games to be super colorful. My recording, my uh, screen recording software doesn't show the difference here, but this, uh, this you'll see. Once you do this, you'll see the difference. 
I wouldn't go too crazy. You'll end up looking like a uh, Minecraft on a shooter game if you go up here. So I would instead stay uh, somewhere on the lower end of this. You do the same thing with your other display. Just pick whichever one you are doing your gaming on and that's probably the one you would want to change. All right, we've done all that. Now I want you guys to come up here, hit performance, should be the top right. This is a screen I would recommend having on your second monitor if you have it or just somewhere. Just take a look at this. Whenever you're actually in game and you get to see um, what's wrong, if anything is going wrong, where you could adjust settings accordingly. It's definitely a little glitchy whenever I'm recording. Like you could see that it's just hopping around. You shouldn't do this. But the thing I would do um, is come up here, hit advisors, and this could show you whatever your latest game is. For me, it's not a game, it's Photoshop, but it'll tell you how good your performance is. It's optimal, if it's optimal. And it'll also come down here and it'll tell you what um, your next step should be if you're trying to upgrade your computer. So for me, I have older hardware, so it's saying I should have the 6900 XT. It's also giving me a processor updates. So this is a cool, cool setting that I would also look at. But that's really all. I would not necessarily touch any sort of overclocking or anything on this. If I were to overclock, I would do it on a complete different application. And I have a video on that. So just type in overclock 5050 and you'll get that video. But I use something completely different. I'm not going to use this AMD Radeon thing. So I'm not going to go over that in this video. But with that being said, hopefully you learned something if you've never watched any of these videos or you at least uh, got some value if you have watched the last year's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please do subscribe. See you later.